Hello and welcome to the FinTech Finance Special Arena. I'm your host, Doug McKenzie. And on today's session, we've got a really, really insightful, really talking point because we're going to be looking at how cloud technology is actually improving operational efficiencies from institutions big to small. And joining me today, I actually have Jason Ang from SmartString. Jason, how are you doing here today? Doing well, thank you. Thanks for having me. It's our pleasure, Jason. Um, for our audience who might not be aware, could you give our viewers a bit of background to yourself, your role at SmartStream, and even SmartStream itself? Well, sure. Um, I'm a product manager with TLM Collateral Management. I've been with the product for about 10 years now. Um, prior to that, I was at Deutsche Bank uh, for 18 years in various capacities. I was VP in charge of collateral management operations in the UK. Um, in terms of SmartStream, um, um, SmartStream is built on over 40 years worth of experience. Um, uh, 70 of the world's top 100 banks, uh, capital markets and buy side firms and corporations rely on SmartStream's next generation technologies wow. and services for mission critical functions. I mean, you are right at the heart of financial services. So Jason, thank you so much for joining us here today. So I've got to ask, what are some of the opportunities for financial institutions to adopt cloud systems? And why have the traditional ones been so slow to do so? Well, that, that's a two part question. So we'll kind of talk about the first one first, uh, and that's opportunities. So for us, we've created our cloud uh, or on-demand offerings uh, because we know that there are some key value propositions that are attractive to our clients. Um, so in terms of cost, there's this mutualization of personnel and hardware. So instead of each organization having personnel that is assigned to this particular hardware or software, we actually maintain it. So this mutualizes the cost and allows us to provide a very compelling use case. Um, internal hardware costs can also be very expensive to maintain given the current structure of data centers at our clients. Um, the second thing is expertise. So here it's about risk reduction. You know, so rather than having like one or two people within um, their organization, knowing our software in each of, you know, the, their organizations, we have a full team who knows how best to run and develop the software. So our clients then, you know, can rely on, on us to take care of those things for them. Um, and the third is scalability. You know, you can increase or decrease your capacity as needed without having to physically add more machines. Um, and basically you pay for what you use. That's absolutely incredible. And I think that's going to be so critical for financial institutions going mm -hmm. forward, because I think, is it fair to say, has scalability become the key KPI behind using cloud finance now? Well, actually, let's let's take um, take uh, the other part of that second uh, that, that question you asked earlier, if you don't mm. mind. No, of course. So, so the, the, I think that that question was to look at why people are wary of stepping into a cloud type of environment. Um, I think there's a couple things here. Um, security, I think, is, is, is paramount in people's minds, right? The idea of, you know, penetration um, by hackers or, um, you know, players that are uh, in, unscrupulous, right? So I think that's why, you know, we choose the best partners to be able to, to, to work together, you know, because again, in this mutualization kind of situation, you know, the AWSs or the Azures, are going to be spending you know billions in making sure that their environments are secure right as compared to you know each provider you know um uh, basically spending you know a certain amount of money to to be able to to then have that kind of a capability um the other part of security is the commingling of data so i think there are a lot of organizations that basically commingle and pool all their clients data into one single system and I think the fear here is, you know, especially with our largest clients, you know, the idea of data breaches or leaks that might happen because all the data is actually commingled, but, you know, logically separated. And again, you know, if it's logically separated, you know, an error in coding or such like could actually unfortunately result in a data breach, right? So this is where we use single tenant virtual private clouds our data is never commingled with uh, other clients' data. You know, each client has their own uh, virtual private cloud, all right? Um, then we want to talk about control, right? Uh, so, so the idea of handing over control um, to, to, you know, an outside provider, I think sometimes is quite scary um, because of things like force upgrades. So if you think about like Facebook, right? You know, when you log on, they force you to upgrade. Now, obviously, it's a, you know, it's a it's a consumer product. So, you know, it doesn't really matter if you're forced to upgrade.
but it doesn't really work for institutions that are regulated stringently, right? Um, so in this case, right, um, if let's say the you know the application that you're on um, you know forces you to upgrade, you may not have enough time to do all your testing, your connectivity, your integration tests, um, and uh, and of course that's a bit too much risk for some of the institutions out there. And so for us, you know, we we don't force people to upgrade, right? We work with our partners to you know on their schedule. Um, the other thing is around quality issues, you know, again, in the topic for control. Um, there's sometimes not enough time to test because of some of the larger players have predetermined schedules on what needs to happen when. So, you know, in, any breaks or issues are, are sort of out of their hands here. And then finally, there's risk, right? Um, risk in terms of, you know, the financial well-being of their partner. Right. So, you know, is there a, a concern where, you know, that that partner might not be well funded or, you know, have any issues with their organization? Um, there's, you know, the, the idea of expertise of their partner. Um, and there's also the, you know, the, the fear of, you know, downtime that's outside of their control. Yeah. Right? So so that's, I think, you know, some of the reasons why people are wary about going onto cloud. But you know there there are things that I think we do to make sure that we mitigate the risk um, because we do have quite a lot of um, uh, of our our um, clients coming on to our on demand system. Incredible, and I think that's that's going to be so important. And you're going back to what I was kind of referring is scalability seems to be the key KPI for a lot of these institutions. You you can't grow if you're architecture can't enable it so do you agree with what i was saying there is scalability the key kpi for organizations that maybe i think you know you've worked at a few yourself um what, what's that inside like i i think it depends on the organization for for some absolutely totally agree with you um for others what they might want is a turnkey um solution right so they might be small um, and, you know, rather than having, you know, uh, a, a team trying to maintain a group that, that basically focuses on making sure that this kind of software is being run, they, they want to focus on their business. And so in those cases, it seems to me that, you know, they want th those kinds of clients want a turnkey solution. Um, and, and some of those smaller clients may not necessarily need to scale dramatically. Right. But, you know, um, I, I think, you know, for either case where where there is a need for scalability um, or, you know, where, you know, there's not a need for scalability. I think in the end, either case, you need expert expertise, inequality, you need stability and you want to make sure that you can control your costs. Um, so I think it, it's it's a KPI, but I wouldn't say it's the KPI, if that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Now, with that in mind, then, you know, I think if scalability is just one thing, um, I still think the main part is just running these institutions is a job in itself. So can you tell me more about how cloud technology can improve the operational efficiency at traditional large institutions? Um, I think here it allows you to focus on your business, right? Um, uh, you basically, you know, have a team that that basically focuses on taking care of the infrastructure right which then you know obviously mutualizes the cost and the infrastructure right so for example using us who then use aws um you know uh and and you you know and you have the confidence that there are people who know the software running the software right so so in that sense you've got operational efficiency because you don't need to maintain those kinds of teams um, the other thing is that you know you can potentially get rapid deployment and upgrades and metrics as well um, that are uh, uh, I guess you know best practices across the industry for that particular software so I think yes absolutely um, there is a, a lot of grounds for operational efficiency um, at, at traditional banks oh, I think the the biggest change to to operations in maybe the last hundred years, I would say, in, in uh, banking has probably been the pandemic. So has cloud-based technology actually enabled financial institutions to grapple with their efficiency, with their just day-to-day -day operations during the pandemic better than, I mean, the, the question I always want to ask is what would have happened if the pandemic had hit finance in 2008? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, um, I, I think that it all depends on how the cloud technology is administered. Um, I think that there there's a lot of benefits um, that that were realized because uh, it's already being run remotely, right? Um, and so you know people uh, that have been administering it and running these kind of things uh, are are used to um, what. I, I think the pandemic sort of forced a lot of traditional organizations to do, which is basically run their organization remotely. Um, and on top of that, obviously, in, in some of our uh, cases, um, you know, the, the volumes uh, skyrocketed, right? So here, this is where you know that 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 thought about scalability suddenly comes to the fore, right? Where you can basically you know um, add on more capacity without any issues. So, so I think you know um, it's really helped um, uh, some of our clients um, uh, uh, be able to manage uh, the pandemic better. That's absolutely brilliant, and and so imperative to millions of people to you know to be able to hear that to know that even if the you know another wave of of pandemic hits, ultimately the technology behind a, a, a bank or a, a financial player now is secure enough in that remote nature. I think that's that's. A, a massive strength to the industry. Now, speaking of that remote nature, are cloud-based systems actually safer than on-prem solutions? You know, it's so typical of uh, maybe the traditional banks to want to do everything in-house. You know, has that changed now? Uh, I, I think it would depend on the execution and the risk tolerance of, of the client, right? Um, if we think about, you know, the perspective here, right? Again, like I mentioned, you know, these cloud providers, right, um, you know, like AWS and Azure spend billions, right, making sure that they are secure, that they are scalable, right? There's teams upon teams of experts um, in those organizations and, and we partner with them, right? You know, um, so so in that sense, we, we, we create use cases um, with them, um, you know, as a trusted partner. So the idea then is, you know, um, we want to create a better environment, right, um, with the best people um, for our clients. So, so you know, can you say that it's safer than on-prem? I, I, I would say it depends on the execution, but, you know, for us, we absolutely want to make it better for, for our clients. I think that's excellent. And, you know, can you tell us how, um, you know, you've, you've been broadening up, bringing up this notion of, of working together with the you know, with your clients, it's not a, it's very much a not just you open up this digital transformation and it's done and that's it. It sounds very much like a kind of organic kind of transformation. So you know, if we stick to the cloud-based technology, has that enabled organisations to continue to collaborate or even look to collaborate and partner in ways they probably hadn't before, and if they had been in more effective ways than had been traditionally done. Um, I think we bring a lot of collective expertise to the table, right? And it's it's not just expertise um, in terms of technology. It's not just expertise in terms of our experience. It's also our expertise in being able to collaborate with, uh, you know, and, and have good relationships with our clients, right? So we've got, you know, in collateral management, we've got decades long partnerships with some of our clients. Um, and so there's a deep level of trust that we've established with them uh, already. Um, and given that each organization has its unique needs, um, you know, we make sure we drive our solutions to help those organizations. But again, because we have a large suite of clients, you know, we then take the best of breed um, and implement that so that, um, you know, the idea is that all of our clients start to benefit from this collaboration. I think that's absolutely excellent. Now, you know, we've, we mentioned, obviously, we've been talking about the nature of the technology and, and also the nature of how SmartStream works with some of your clients. But can you tell us a bit more about what SmartStream is working on currently? Um, so we're, we're working on a whole bunch of different things. Um, uh, I, I think for, for me, I'm looking at data holistically across organizations. Right? What do people use our data for? and how can we use uh, data to help enhance our processes and our clients' processes? So for example, um, you know, the, the idea of inventory or, um, you know, and collateral management, you know, across the organization, right? You know, there's like, you know, there's, there's liquidity um, questions, there's, 
um, you know, the, the best placement of, you know, and use of this collateral, right? So, you know, the idea of best uh, use of assets across the organization, um, and then providing data, right, through APIs, like, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, to downstream and upstream systems for, you know, eligibility to determine pre-trade or post-trade optimization, right? And then, you know, surfacing these insights you know, by either, you know, having the data be in a data lake um, or, you know, in, in, a, in a location where then organizations can then use, you know, um, cloud, you know, uh, capabilities um, to scale up AI um, and, and, and have, you know, insights uh, into, you know, the, the, the cross organizational data. I think that that's one of the things that you know we're really looking forward to, to to working on because you know we've got a very very powerful innovations lab that you know is driving a lot of AI through our solutions. I think hearing about that that it's the ultimate step in collaboration is is that that cross connectivity between organisations that have once been siloed, once been castles, and they're now going to be able to talk to each other in new ways. That to me speaks volumes of where we've come to when it comes to, for instance, open banking in Europe and maybe just this this drive for openness. And I'm really excited to hear some of the projects that come out from this, this new movement. So Jason, thank you so much for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure hearing all these insights because you know when you're you're very customer focused you don't get to see these technologies behind and naturally to be able to hear it from your perspective. It's been an absolute pleasure. So Jason, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time and for having me. Take care. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you. And also to all our viewers, you can catch the rest of the series and much more over at ffnews.com. And of course, YouTube and LinkedIn, where I'll see you in the comments. So once again, Jason, thank you very much and goodbye.